That's where it all started, right here. Right here, baby. We are at the spot we call the bottoms. It's on the far west side of our property. Really the last big timber we have until it just starts getting into CRP. And uh, last summer, about this time, is where we found Sobel. We found him in the food plot about three or 400 yards to our west. And what he was doing is he was funneling out of this timber into CRP and he was getting to that food plot at night. But we just could not get him in daylight. So we decided to move a couple cameras around. Um, I found a big trail coming across this road that feeds in the CRP and uh, put a camera on it in a little mineral spot. And sure enough, him along with two other of our shooters showed up in daytime. I know this deer is, you know, five and a half years old. He's going to be in the 160s. He was he was there last year. We know he's going to be back this year at some point. So we're getting ready to set all this up, go in here, make sure this uh, this stand's good to go, check on the trail, maybe put some mock scrapes in soon. And uh, I mean, we're, we're going all out right now for, for this deer to get him in, in September, October, before rifle season gets here. And this right here is why he got the name Sobel. I had a trail camera set up on that tree pointing at this trail. This trail walks entirely down this barbed wire fence here. And one of my favorite shows of all time is Band of Brothers. And Captain Sobel cuts the barbed wire fence. If you've seen the show, you, you know what I'm talking about. Why is there a fence here? There should be no fence here. What is the god hold up, Mr. Sober? <laughs> a fence! Say, um, God. A barbed wire fence! Now hey, you cut that fence and get this guy up with you on the move! Yes, sir! But it's a good name, and this, I've, I don't know what it was about this. It just sunk in, and I mean, they just stuck with them. So, this is Sobel's spot. He walks this trail right in the crease of this bottom area, right before you get up into that CRP. And uh, I mean, we got so many pictures of him. He, he just, and you get down here and you can just feel why these deer love it in early uh, September and October, because it's 10 degrees cooler than it is out there. It's 95, if you come in here, it feels like it's mid eighties. Th this is one of our best food plots on the property. Um, we plant it with turnips, radish, all that good stuff. And it, I mean, it's beautiful when it comes up. But that's what, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get this planted. We got a rain coming this week. We got about exactly a month till bow season starts. So we're gonna get that in the ground and we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna get this deer at some point. Whether it's here on the food plot down in the bottom, we can swing it on the power line. I don't know, we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. Just got situated in the stand. It's the afternoon of October the 4th. We took a week off. We didn't do any bow hunting last week. We hunted open a weekend. Had some pretty good hunts. Um, saw a bunch of deer for opening weekend. It's, it's unlike past years. We had a super big cold front push in. It was in the 50s in the mornings, and um, 70s and 80s in the afternoon. The weather's changing. These bucks are finding their pattern for the fall and winter. Out of their summer spots, but we're gonna do the best we can to get an arrow through this deer. I mean, he's he's all I've been thinking about for two years straight. Dark in here. 
around seven in these woods. It's so thick. You lose light pretty quick. Cross our fingers. Hope he does it right. It is a Wednesday, October 6th. And uh, got a little free time. And left Little Rock about 2 o'clock. Got over here 3.30. And uh, I had to put a ground blind out. And this deer hadn't been on the camera in the bottom for probably a week now. So, mad dash to the ranger to try and get back to Little Rock that night. And I walk out in the food plot and I see three deer at about 60 yards. And I pull my binoculars up and he's standing in the middle of the food plot. Didn't try anything that afternoon. It was awesome to see him though. That was the first time I laid eyes on him all year. Come over here today. Put that rhino ground blind in the tree line, same spot I had it last year. Perfect cover. Um, and uh, I guess we're gonna put some uh, gear on and go sit it. I mean, it was pouring down rain on me the entire time I was setting it up, so I'm not worried about sin or stinking it up. I was super quiet. I'm gonna take a few shots with the bow, pack up my stuff, and get out there. I think we have found the solution for this deer. It's middle of October, been hunting hard for just less of a, than a month and just had no luck. So it's been sitting in the ground blind. We're, ha we're having some great hunts, but all these bucks that are coming out in the food plot, they're coming out and they're just heading straight north to the, to the end by the scrape line. So it's nothing but CRP, you can't get a lock on in there. And um, I was at Academy the other day I saw this tripod, $115, just a 12 foot big game tripod. And I, I put it together and I just took the shooting rails off. So um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go in there to that CRP, we're gonna find us a spot and we're just gonna prop it up in the CRP and just look over that north end of that food plot where the scrape line is and all these bucks been funneling out. Edge of the CRP overlooking this food plot right here. This tripod, I mean, it worked out perfect. It's real narrow coming up. I mean, it's you're up here a lot more than you think you are. And we just cut the limbs off this one side right here. We got a good backdrop. Now I can see this whole food plot. And I'm really blocked off on either side for these deer coming in. And they won't see me until right in front. But I got a good feeling. I mean, bow arm right here, it's a little extended. Get it over here on this side. Shoot left-handed, camera arm will be here. Plenty of room for my backpack. I think it's gonna work out. Academy 
sports and didn't put the shooting rails on it so I could shoot a bow out of it. And I'm literally on the edge of CRP with 30 foot tall trees about, I don't know, eight inches wide. They're not thick. This one here, I just shaved the side off so I could hang my gear on and hang my camera arm up. And I'm tucked in great, got a great backdrop. Got a 35 yard shot to the middle of this food plot. I got a scrape dead straight in front of me. I've hunted this food plot 60 times in the past two years. I know how these deer work. I can't believe I didn't think of this idea earlier. Frustrating three weeks, really frustrating month of October. Usually we have tons of excitement. And uh, we can have some really decent hunts. The weather has been brutal the middle part of October. And on top of that, my shooter that I've been chasing for two years disappeared on me three weeks ago. This morning, he popped back up on camera. We haven't had... Any, we, we always leave a camera in this food plot, but we haven't had any minerals or food or anything out. We just had a, a camera overlooking the food plot and a scrape line right here. And he popped back up and we're about to slip in here. And then we're gonna freshen up a couple scrapes and uh, hopefully slip in here this afternoon and hopefully he'll come back out. spot. I've had a mock scrape here since the summer and it recently just poured down rain for about two days straight. So I came in here and just freshened it up a little bit. I just raked me out about a two by two spot and I have a little licking branch right here. It's about chest height and then just a little bit of dominant buck here is all you need. But if he's in here and he's using the scrape line, there's about three spots right here. He should come check it. So Hopefully that'll fire him up a little bit. We just got set up. November the 11th. November 10th will be a day that might haunt me for a very long time if I don't kill this deer. Yesterday afternoon, I was back in Little Rock. And the buck I've been going after for years now, was standing 30 yards in front of me, broad daylight, so I've never been so locked in on a hunt in my entire life. I got in here at 3.15, just way, way early, because I wanted to make sure everything's set up, no problems, didn't have to bump any deer out, 60 degrees, 10 mile an hour wind. Beautiful sunny day. I mean, this, these are the days that you wait for.
is at the sweet spot. It looks so good from here. Oh my god. I saw him back there in the tree. I saw him back there in the trees. And uh, I had three doe out here in front of me. And I knew if he got all the way in front of me, these does were staring at me the whole time. And I couldn't move. I had my bow in my lap, thank God. And uh, he came out to the edge of the food plot and he was about to hit that scrape. 34 yards. Let him stop. And just got off a nice easy shot. That's just, I've been waiting on that for two freaking years. I think I just freaking smoked a baby. Oh my god. It's only, it's 4.30. Last night he was in here at 5 o'clock. I'm shaking so bad. Oh my god. I can't explain how long I've waited for an opportunity like that. I gotta rewatch that footage and make sure it was a good shot. Are you serious? Where at? Do what? Did you film him? Dude, he freaking came out money. Dude, I think he ducked into it. It was definitely, it was definitely looking low, the first, like the first little bit. But I think he ducked into it. It's been 20 minutes since I shot Sobel, and looking back on the footage, him ducking saved everything. That shot was headed a little low. And he ducked straight into it. And I think it looked like it got literally right behind the front shoulder. Straight in the corner pocket, baby. Let's hope it, let's hope we made it happen right there. Four thirty this afternoon. By the way, I called my shot I, during during the interview before the hunt. I mean I knew it was gonna happen. And it was just too perfect. He was in there last night. He was all comfortable and everything. And I could just see him coming from this trail about 15 yards out. And he came out into the food plot, 36 yards, let it fly. Did not feel great on the initial shot, but watched the footage and he ducked straight into it. And there's really good blood, clean pass through. And I'm thinking I clipped the heart. So if that's the case, he should be no more than about 80 yards in there. Clean pass through, I got blood all the way up on my fletchings red all the way down it grim reaper opened all the way up and then he started bleeding immediately and he came he ran back in on the same trail he, he came in on right here really good blood there and then he starts spewing really really good right through this trail Yeah, hand me that light. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, hand me that. Dude. Don't drop. He's a giant. He is an absolute. <laughs> he is an absolute. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
Dude, look at that. <laughs> look at those G3s. He's stiff, he's been dead. Oh my goodness. I can't believe we actually killed him. <laughs> look at that, look at the exit wound too. I'm telling it, you. it came out across. It turned out all right. Dude, this thing, look Sobel at the, look, is a tank. Look at the beams. Look at the main beams. This right main beam has to be 23, I don't know. That is, look at that thing. <laughs> that thing is a joke. Oh my goodness. This right here is Sobel, or Captain Sobel, as we named him. If you've seen Band of Brothers, you know Sobel cut the barbed bar wire fence. Well, this deer, all the trail cam pictures we'd get them in the summer was right along an old cattle fence down in the river bottoms over here. Now look at my Spartan camera app, and at five o'clock he's standing in the middle of the food plot, um, just moseying around. And he just stayed out there for like 45 minutes, and I knew, I was like, I, if I can get in there tomorrow with a good wind, then we're gonna get him. He was comfortable. He had been gone for a month straight. The last time I'd seen him on camera was October 10th. <clears throat> and uh, he finally came back to his home spot right before the rut, right where he spent the past two years. And I mean, he's a freaking giant. I mean, just a huge six by six. My biggest archery kill by 20 inches. And he might be up there with Splitter, a buck I killed a couple years ago. <clears throat> and um, I mean, just an absolute giant. I mean, me and Josh, we've spent so many hours out here just trying to get spots for this deer. Um, we thought of everything. It was just such a hard place to hunt. And finally, um, in September, I went and bought a 12-foot tripod and put it up against some CRP just so I could put my uh, camera arm on the tree. And that was the only way I was going to be able to hunt this deer. He came out in a corner of a food plot, and the only way I was going to be able to do it was in that tripod. And finally, I was sitting 12 feet up, kind of exposed, and at 4.30 this afternoon, he came freaking walking out. And at 36 yards, I made a really good shot on him. And honestly, if it wasn't for him ducking, I don't know if we would be sitting here right now. But that's the first tag here at Arkansas. First buck of the year, first deer on the farm. We haven't even killed a doe this year, but man, what a buck. That's all I can say. Fist bump. The old, the old Come on! It's gonna be a nice, comfortable nine iron for him. That's a nice, comfortable nine iron for him. Get the hell out of here. Go get a beer. What is that? <laughs>